Welcome to Bell to Bells, your women's wrestling wire. I am Mr. Warren Hayes. Thank you very much for joining us here for another interview here on youtube.com slash bell to bells. Subscribe, why don't you? You know, because that's what we do here a lot. We do a lot of great interviews like this one here that we're about to do with one of the stalwarts of the British independent wrestling scene. I am super thrilled to be joined by Jetta today. Jetta, hello. How are you doing? Hi. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry you might have heard my cat there um, interrupting your <laughs> introduction. That was that was Tibby. Just wanted to say hello. See, that's okay. I was about to ask about Tibby. Look, we get we we interview all sorts of wrestlers. Did you know that wrestlers have a lot of pets? Yeah, I mean, I have two cats. I definitely have more if I could, but I don't think they'd be very happy with me if. If we ever come home smelling of like, you know, like you go around someone's house or like family members have like dogs and whatever and you come home, they're just, right. they're not best pleased. So yeah, I'd have so, more, but they, they won't let me. <laughs> so, oh, well, okay. So uh, knowing that you'd want to grow your cat family, that's always a good thing. No, it's a, we're used, we're used to it here to being interrupted by, by dogs and cats and the like. So <laughs> we're, we're, we're glad Tibby has let, uh, has let their presence know. That's fantastic. Um, First of all, look, uh, it's the first time that you and I have an opportunity to, to chat and uh, uh, and I'm very thankful for it. The, um, the, you know, let's get the elephant out of the room. You know, the, the big thing, uh, you know, with the, you know, the pandemic last year in 2021 slowed a lot of things down now uh, in 2020, excuse me. That's, you know, yeah, we, we just pretend time. it didn't exist, don't we? That's what it is. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, slowed everything down uh, and now things are slowly starting to, to open back up. Uh, promotions are starting to, 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 to get back into the swing of things as well, as far as wrestling goes. How, how was uh, the pandemic era for, for you, Jetta? And, and how do you feel about, uh, how good do you, th do you feel about things opening back up on the other side of the Atlantic right now? Um, I think surreal is probably the word I would use to describe the pandemic, because I don't think if anyone would have told anybody that something like this would happen in our lifetime i just think that we've, we've we're quite spoiled these days <laughs> sure Stuff like this just doesn't happen to us it happens to people in the past <laughs> um so i think like yeah surreal definitely um yeah i mean it's it's been a bit stop start hasn't it so it's it's not been a continuous lockdown um you know things have opened back up and then closed back down over here um so yeah it's it's been a little bit up and down i think i think in terms of like wrestling and, and live performances in in general over here they've never really been back on the table until right. until the actual official you know end date and, and and the vaccine rollout and all that sort of stuff so um even though we've been able to kind of in certain times over the last year like go out to restaurants or, or or bars sort of in small groups and things like that um yeah this is the first time like wrestling has been kind of back on the table to, to come back so yeah it's been it's been weird not having it um it's it kind of I don't know it's strange it sort of feels like it was yesterday but also feels like it was years ago the last time um we we were at, we were at the the res gal for eve so yeah it's it's strange but it's exciting to kind of think right okay yeah it's just around the corner now um it feels like it was a million years away um right. and obviously like you know a lot of people um have been preparing for their return you know getting training in and and things like that um and now it's kind of around the corner so it's exciting it's scary it, it's all of those things so yeah um I think more excited, maybe more scary tomorrow, but more excited at the moment. <laughs> uh, you're, but as far as, you know, your experience within the pandemic, it wasn't all that bad because you got engaged uh, last December to uh, Charlie Morgan. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Uh, how has, uh, how has the life, uh, how has life changed for you since then? Because I'm, I'm recently engaged as well. So there's probably oh, things, you know, we, pardon me? Congratulations. Well, well, thank you. I, I wasn't. I wasn't fishing for the congratulations. I was. I was literally like, you know, <laughs> let, let's talk. You know, how, maybe I can relate to a couple of things. You know, how 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 have things been with uh, with you and Charlie? Well, uh, yeah, that 
was that was a definite if there can be a highlight of a pandemic that was for sure the highlight of the pandemic <laughs> that was the highlight of the pandemic um yeah uh, things are good i mean you kind of want to say when you get engaged a lot of things change but they sort of don't like they you know they sort of stay the same don't they it's but it's nice to have a nice ring to wear um yeah i mean we've started planning our wedding um which is exciting um uh we're not we're going to give it a few years because there's still restrictions and all that sort of mm-hmm. stuff so yeah we've been viewing venues and and things like that and we've um we've picked our venue so yeah, it's exciting. We're in the kind of planning stages at the moment, um, which again, kind of similar to coming back to wrestling, is exciting for, as in exciting to plan it and scary when you start getting the, the quotes for how much stuff is going to cost. <laughs> yeah, it, um, it, it starts getting a little frightening. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a reality <laughs> check, right? Yeah, but thankfully, you know, through wrestling, we know we know some photographers, we know, we know some people who may may not bake for a living, but over the pandemic, they've been baking quite a lot. Um, so yeah, <laughs> Nina Samuels is going to be <laughs> Nina Samuels is going to be doing some baking for our wedding. Um, Wait so, a second, yeah, thankful. Nina Samuels, what is Nina Samuels going to be baking for your wedding? We haven't decided yet. Okay, um, she's providing us with samples, which is nice. <laughs> Like 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 little pastries, like little cakes, and she said it's like oh we could do this, we could do that. We're thinking well, we're thinking blondies and brownies. That's what we're oh. thinking, but like a mi- a mix of a mix of flavors because like I don't know what, I don't know what you think like and what it's like. I mean, I've been to a wedding in the states, but I don't know if they're all kind of the same. But like the whole cake thing is a bit like nobody really eats the cake. Like it's just kind of there, so you can cut into it. So. We were like, well, why don't we just have like a top tier to cut into and then have something like like brownies, blondies, like donuts, things like that that people really like. And there's like a mixture of stuff and they can just kind of take what they want. Um, and then when we were allowed to kind of mix and and, and whatnot, uh, we did some wrestling training and, and um, yeah, Nina came down and did some training with me. So uh, she brought some cakes. So that was nice. And that was where we got the idea. So she kind of made a rod for her own back. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, so but yes you're right you know the, the cake as far as weddings around here is more of a showpiece really than anything else i appreciate that you're like really leaning into the fact that we'd like people to actually you know eat the sweets yeah like do you want to spend like hundreds of pounds on a cake that mm, no one's really bought i'm not really bothered by like traditional cake so yeah and neither so, is charlie so yeah, that's that's one of the things that we've ticked off so yeah nina that, samuels that, that, is baker that's a good thing so i'm assuming so i'm assuming you you'd give a rave review to her to her baking skills then <laughs> oh we've been giving rave reviews anytime we've, we've and i don't know if you've seen like um nxt uk a lot of the girls are always putting up stories about um nina's baking so um yeah she again she's making a rod for her own back now because people are just gonna expect her in the pandemic it's probably fine she probably had time to do it but no, people are yeah. <laughs> now that now that she's getting back to work, yeah, good. Yeah. It, it's a good thing. Yeah, book book her now. That's basically what you have to what we're saying yeah, to wrestlers book. out there. <laughs> um, well, well, that's fantastic, and please extend uh, all the best to Charlie as well. Congratulations to you both. Um, you've been wrestling for Eve. You've been a staple for pro wrestling you for a long time. You're, you're actually going to be wrestling at uh, Wrestle Queendom, which is going to be Eve's big post pandemic return as well on Friday, August 27. Um, so you've, uh, you've, you've, I think you've only exclusively wrestled for them since 2019, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, I've wrestled a few other places, but ma- mainly for Eve. That's kind mainly of the place where I'll wrestle predominantly. Um, and then obviously they run quite regularly as well. So sure. it's normally like once, well, at least once a month, maybe once or twice, depending on on, on what's going on. So, um, yeah, they, they keep us pretty busy. Um, so, yeah, predominantly, what? yeah, probably predominantly Eve. It, it, so is it exclusively because they have a regular schedule or is there... Is there something that makes Eve a little more special as to in regards to other places? Yeah, I think Eve is definitely special. It's it's got that special kind of um 
Oh, if I could just cut out there. No, there you go. I don't know why, but my, my screen just went black. But I'm oh. still here. So, um, yes. So I think it might have just gone on a screensaver. Sorry. That's yeah. Okay. So, so Eve, Eve is Eve is very special. It's 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 a special place. Um, and I think a lot of that is because of uh, it's it's a group of girls that come together from obviously all over the UK, but all over Europe. And then you know there'll be people that will come in from Japan or from America or Canada or, or you know wherever. Mm -hmm. You know if there's if there's somebody who's who, who's talented um, and they've got you know something about them that sets them apart from from everyone else, then in all likelihood they'll make their way to Eve. And I mean, if you look at like the list of um, female wrestlers that are, are kind of making waves, you know, pre-pandemic and then during the pandemic, whether they're in WWE or AEW or Japan or or, or you know the Australian scene at the moment is quite hot isn't it so mm -hmm. um most of those women have been in Eve at some point um whether it's once um over she won say for example or whether it's regularly so I think that kind of shows a testament to the to the talent that comes through Eve because a lot of the time it's, it's people who maybe people haven't really seen yet or they haven't had their big break yet that a lot of the time if you track it back they've been at Eve at some point so you know there's there's obviously something that Dan sees you know he's he's good at spotting um people um and that always makes it interesting as well because you're obviously wrestling people that that you probably normally wouldn't bump into in a show sure. that would be you know a local kind of radius type of show sort of thing um and also just the atmosphere you know the crowd the fact that it is a it is a regular show so um it's it's a well I'm sure it will we'll probably move into a new more regular venue now that the, the res gal shut down but it was it was at least once a month in the res gal um and that's something that's quite rare on the independent scene as well um yeah. a, a show that is ran at least once a month um and people will go every single month to to, to see the storylines develop and things like that and that's something that's a little bit different as well because you don't really get the opportunity to do that on a lot of independent shows actually you know develop storylines over a year because you know that you're there every month um, which is another thing that makes it, it special. Um, I just think the ethos as well, you know, it's 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 wrestling, but it's it's kind of got that punk kind of edge to it. Yeah. Um, and then the locker room as well, you know, everybody is, um, we're, we're all trying to make each other the best version of ourselves, you know, like every, it's, it's, a, it's a collaborative effort. It's not kind of like people are only caring about what they're doing, you know, sure. um, and we care about the show as a whole. So I think that also kind of adds into it as well. Uh, you mentioned the Resistance Gallery uh, closing down. You know, uh, you hear when you hear a talk about about Eve. You know, a lot of it has. You know, a lot of it had to do with the you know the particular vibe and, and atmosphere that Res Gal would bring to the show. Um, how do you feel that's going to change the overall Eve experience now that? it's going to be Eve's going to have to find a new home moving forward yeah I think exactly that it was um I mean it was a grungy bar under an arches in in East London and it was it was just kind of like it fit that kind of like underground punk sort of like vibe of the promotion um so yeah I think it did definitely add to the atmosphere. I think it's really sad that we're not going to go back there. And I guess sometimes yeah. as well, the saddest thing is, is like, you know, the last show that we did there in March before we went into full on lockdown, you know, you walk out of that venue thinking that you'll be there next month. And, you know, yeah. 18 months later, it we won't be back there. It's closed down and we haven't been there for 18 months. So I think it's one of those where, you know, it's sad to kind of think that we never really, never really got that, that send off, um, really yeah. um, to say goodbye to it because it, it, it did you know it did definitely it was basically like a member of the cast the res gal if that makes sense absolutely um, so yeah it's definitely going to be missed but you know I'm sure that we'll find somewhere else um, with a similar sort of vibe um, and it will just be it won't be the same but it will just be different and I think you know the thing that makes Eve is is the the people on the show, the crew, and the, and the audience that that come to the show, and that's not going to change. So, yeah, it, it's sad to see it go, but yeah, I'm sure we'll find a new home that will make just as special as the Res Gal. I'm sure. I'm absolutely sure. Um, the um, 
earlier in your career, right? Your 19 year career, by the way, you know, there's, there was a little pause in there, but let's just gloss over that. That's a, that's a grown adult. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's a child in it about itself. Um, yeah. Um, the, um, you, you did wrestle in the United States, you know, you wrestled for Shimmer, uh, Women's Superstars Uncensored, uh, but you haven't been back in a while, about a decade, and assuming, you know, all the travel restrictions ease off and we can start floating back and forth uh, as it as once was. Uh, would you like to return to the United States? Oh yeah, I'd I'd love I'd love to come back, um, especially for somewhere like Shimmer. You know, it's um it's a similar sort of thing to Eve, isn't it? And that yeah. the reason why it works and why it's so popular is because it takes it takes that one that one little and you know that the Eagles Club is also similar to the Res Gal. It's 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 part of it's special. It's part of the show, isn't it? Um, and you get this cast of wrestlers from all over the world that you would never normally see on a show together, and all of a sudden they're all in the same room on the same show. So you see matches that you, you would never normally see. And again, similarly, if you look at, you know, the list of, of women that have wrestled for Shimmer, they've, you know, there's there's a, a massive list of, of females. If they've come from the independent team and they've moved into anything bigger and better, the chances are they've been through Shimmer. So again, it's a, it's a similar sort of thing with Dave, as is with Dan, you know, he has an eye for spotting people um, and for, you know, helping them develop um, and become um, the best version of themselves. So yeah, it's similar, it's just on the other side of the world, isn't it? So yeah, um, of, of course, would, would, love, would love to go back at some point, fingers crossed. And, and I'm convinced Shimmer would open you with, uh, uh, welcome you with open arms. Um, and uh, uh, women's wrestling opportunities in North America are becoming more and more, uh, are, are opening up as well. There's more and more as, you know, Ring of Honor is uh, getting serious about their women's division. There's the NWA as well. Um, are there any other promotions that you're kind of, that you'd be eyeing to be like at the very least, you know, I'd like to get it maybe a tryout, maybe see what, what I could bring there? I, I think the stuff that's going on in NWA at the moment is is really cool um, and really interesting. And again, it's, it's a similar sort of thing where they're taking that kind of, let's just get the the best people from around the world and bring them together and, and kind of put them on a show and see what happens. Um, and I like that um, it's it's open, you know, it, sure. it's not that kind of closed, this person's contracted to this company. So sure. that's it. You know, I like that there's that openness now, kind of similar with what with what AEW are doing um, with impact and, and, and being able to share talent. It can only be a good thing, can't it? You know, I and again, so. it, it makes it makes wrestling exciting again. And I think that's the thing that's kind of been lost along the way, you know, when is going back obviously when when wcw stopped and and everything was wwe it it didn't you know yeah it, it's it's great and there's obviously you know fantastic performers in in wwe and there, there were uh, fantastic matches over that time period but it doesn't give that excitement that buzz of like anyone can turn up at any place at any time and sure. that's what made you know those Monday Night Wars and and the war between the two companies really exciting because you didn't know who was going to turn up where and who was going to interact with who, and that's something that seems to be kind of opening up now when you're looking at Impact and, and AW and the stuff that's going on with NWA, um, and that's really cool because you, you, wrestling fans don't want to see like wrestlers in, in just stuck in one place for a long time. You know mm. that's why the territories worked so mm -hmm. well because when people got a little bit stale or they'd kind of worked with everyone they needed to work with, they moved on, they went somewhere else, they changed it up. They came back a different person right. and that kept the business moving. And I think, you know, that, that model worked for so long for a reason. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to be able to, to, to get out there and, and wrestle different places and, and wrestle, wrestle different people. There's, uh, so much talent in America. I mean, a, a couple of the girls that, that have come over from from the states recently for for Eve. So Holly Dead, I'd I'd love to have a one on match one on one match with her. I had a four way with her at Eve, um, and yeah, I'd love to wrestle her one on one. Um, now that Mercedes is is back out on the Indies, dare I say, <laughs> I'd love to have a match with her. She's always she always jokes with me that she she wants to wrestle me so she can chop me. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay well and, and you can already feel it right you can already feel the chop when she yeah, says that she, like, okay. yeah. when charlie was wrestling she wrestled charlie she chopped charlie 
obviously um i used to be in a team with lacy and rain and, and she's chopped both of them so she says i'm the only one left i complete the set yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah she's collecting it yeah you just have just have a you, you're you're the only one left there but that that's fantastic and it's it's nice to hear you talk about you know the women you, that you'd like to wrestle like i feel like just about a year ago these kind these types of um this type of you know uh foresight or at least you know forward thinking was a little dip more difficult because of the pandemic so it's it's good to yeah. hear that but i mean you know on top of that i mean you've this regardless you've already wrestled like a, a who's who of women's wrestlers right you've wrestled mickey james you've wrestled uh, mako satamora awesome kong emi sakura chris wolf right sarah del yeah. rey um you've mentioned holiday and mercedes martinez look Let's say all the walls are down. We literally have like the, the ultimate forbidden door for Jetta. Who is the one person you'd like to wrestle right now? Like the your absolute dream match. <clears throat> oh God, yeah. So, oh, that's a <laughs> tough one. Um, I mean, I'm always going to say Lita because she's the reason why I even started wrestling. Um, like most, I don't think, I think she does get a lot of credit, but... Like, this is going to sound like a really weird analogy, but I feel like she's like the Spice Girls of female wrestling. Like, she really kicked down the door. And, like, when you talk about, like, the women's revolution, it mm -hmm. starts with Lita. Because most of the women that you see today doing the stuff that they do, you know, the wanting to do, like, well, just wrestle like the guys, not just sure. doing the moves that the girls do. That started with Lita. It was Lita that inspired us to, to want to just wrestle like everybody else and just be treated like everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, so Lita would always be m my ultimate. Um, if we're talking about, I mean, I'd like to wrestle Mickey again. Um, that was a, a fun match we had, but it was, it was relatively short. So it'd be cool to kind of wrestle her and have like a bit more time to, to do more stuff because but it's, it's mad because when I was in the ring with her, like it, it, you could, you, she's just, so good the way she moves everything she does just just crisp and yeah it was it was a really good experience um manami toyota was always on my list because again like my two heroes were, were lita and manami toyota so to wrestle her was cool um but yeah I'd, I'd probably say that's probably like there's but there are so many so many people out there sure. that I would, I would love to wrestle um so yeah excited to hopefully get back out there and for things to, to open back up I mean, I, personally, I you know, it's the kind of situation where I'd love to see the Princess Diana of pro wrestling doing that. By the way, where where did where did you pick up that nickname? How did that come about? Um, do you know what? I don't. I think it was just trying to be a, trying to be a heel. Okay. Um, and obviously, like Diana is like very beloved over here. Of course. And I just thought it would probably get booed to call myself the Princess Diana of wrestling because. I, you know, I'm sneaky and I, I don't wrestle properly and I cheat and like, but I think that I'm like, you know, I'm always following the rules and like, I'm very pure and blah, blah, blah. So it was, it was kind of like a bit of a like, oh, this will get me booed. And it did. The first few, the first time I did it, it got a bit of a, oh, and then a boo. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's good, that's good. But then obviously over time, it kind of then like, and that, that was that, I mean, again, that's the thing with Eve, you know. I was always a heel in Eve, and then just over time, the crowd just just started to get behind me. So we just went with it, and that's what I really love about Eve as well. You just kind of like it's like, like with the whole thing with with me and Erin. We never really had an end goal with that on whether or not me and at one point Erin was going to turn heel on me. Um, I was going to stay heel. We were just going to finish it. I would turn babyface, and in the end, we were just kind of like, let's just go with what the crowd wants, and then we'll just we'll just go with that and obviously that's what happened the crowd just naturally started cheering me so then princess diana then became people's princess people's so princess yes. kind of proud, yeah. do you think that maybe you know the fact that you were you know using carly simon's theme and it sort of became it's become a sing-along right uh, for yeah. your for your entrances you know people always talk about judas you know there there there, there was oh. another sing-along before <laughs> that um yeah. Do you think that might have contributed? Because it, you know, it's it's it, it is a fun song. It's a good, you know, it's a karaoke song. It's a song that's just fun to hum and sing mindlessly. But yeah. Do you think that might have contributed to people sort of shifting yeah. towards the, your I good think side? So. I think 
the thing with it is again is, is it's like when I picked that I, I was between that and, and Tina Turner simply the best I was between those two songs because I wanted something that was old I wanted something that was like cheesy and very not cool at all because everyone picks like <laughs> cool like rap songs cool like rock songs and whatever and I was like I don't want, I want my music to be really uncool I want it I want to come out to it and people be like what the hell is she a, like, a little soft rock <laughs> Yeah, like that yeah. was that was the reaction because that suits the gimmick, right? Right. So I settled on nobody does it better because better Jetta, and I thought that what would happen is people would say nobody likes you Jetta or so something <sighs> something along those. Like I thought like the the rhyme is there, so it just right. needs the crowd. It just needs the crowd to pick up on it, and then whatever they pick up on, I can just go along with it. But also, it's it's, it's the same as simply the best nobody does it better like it's, it's quite cocky at the same time um and it's just it's just like a song that like your granddad or your nan would listen to which was <laughs> well, kind of the point um, right. and it stands out isn't it it's different from anything else that anyone can absolutely do. And yeah they, they just started singing nobody does it jet which makes no sense but you know yeah it's it no, uh, yeah i'm glad that i picked it it was definitely the right choice but I think that probably adds to it because, and again, that's part of the charm, isn't it? Because I think that's part of the charm why the crowd warmed to me so much because I am uncool, um, I do lose all the time, so they just kind of felt a bit sorry for me. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works. <laughs> that, nothing, nothing like nothing like pity, right? To get yourself exactly. over it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll take it. Um. I mean, it's 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 fun that we're talking about this because you know you're you 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 know you're 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 a very skilled professional wrestler. You have your 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 training, but you know these details that we're talking about here. It, it's it, you're we're talking more on the performance side of things, and you know there's some there's a lot of extremely talented professional wrestlers who are very technical and very good at their craft, but you know maybe uh, aren't quite as ease with the showmanship part of it. You are. Uh, I, I think that's one of your your intangibles. Um, do you, uh, outside of your wrestling training, have you had any formal training in you know the performing arts, acting, singing, whatnot? I don't know. Just... Definitely not singing. Um, no, 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 <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing like that. Um, I was never really particularly interested in drama or anything like that when when I was at school. I think it's literally just just wrestling. Right. I don't know what it is. I think like you just like when I first, like I say, when I first started wrestling, Lita was my hero. And then, I, and then when I started to like learn about like other types of wrestling, then I really liked like the Japanese women's wrestling, Manami Toyota, Aja Kong, you know, people like that. Um, so why I've kind of had those influences and then ended up doing what I do, I, I don't know. I think it was just a a natural progression because you kind of find like what your niche is and just through wrestling what what works for you and what doesn't work for you and one thing that I kind of noticed you know when when women's wrestling started breaking out like in the in the like you know 2006 2007 mm -hmm. um all of the girls were trying to wrestle like and they were just wrestling and a lot of them were kind of wrestling like with their head down and just like you know well, they were getting like crowd reactions and stuff like that because they were cool, doing cool stuff like don't get me wrong but I kind of looked at that and I kind of thought like mm, I'm not going to be able to top that and if you're on an all women's show and there's like eight other matches and every match is like a serious competition where they're both you know going balls to the wall then like what would set me apart and right. I was like well being a character is a break from that because you could be the biggest women like women's wrestling fan or wrestling fan like but you'd be hard pressed to sit through you know 10 matches that are all serious matches like you need a bit of like like you know you can't just have the same sort of style all the time so I kind of thought well if I if I kind of lean into that a little bit more because I'm, I'm I think I'm that's kind of where my strength is mm -hmm. then I'm I'm like a bit of a I'm, I'm a break I'm like something different so it's fresher you know sure. um but it's also playing to my strengths because I couldn't do the other stuff that the other girls were doing um and yeah it just it just worked for me and I, I think as well when I was wrestling a lot before I would wrestle on the camps over here which I don't know if you know too much about but it's basically just like a holiday camps where there's loads of kids they might not really particularly be wrestling fans they're just kind of there on holiday 
and they get to just shout at grown ups that are wrestling and cheer them. <laughs> okay. and cheer them. It's all very theatrical and like cheesy and, and yay boo. And that's where I wrestled quite a lot. And I enjoyed that. And I think I kind of brought that into what I was doing because, again, that was very uncool. But because it was uncool, when you would do it on the like, call it indie shows, it was like ironically funny. So it sure. would still get over sort of thing. So, yeah. yeah. So, but, but I, makes perfect sense the the need to uh to to stand out like that but and it's it's carried you all this way yeah all the way over to 2021 if you if 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 everyone is listening to this before uh august 27 well uh do take the opportunity to watch uh jetta perform at wrestle queendom for pro wrestling eve's big return it's going to be free on youtube on the Pro Wrestling Eve YouTube channel, so do check it out. But Jedi, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to chat with me today. That was uh, it was awesome. It was a great time. Why don't you let all of our listeners know and viewers why not where they can uh, find you on social media, merch if you have it. Spill the beans. Go right ahead. <laughs> so um, on Twitter, I am Jetta underscore Wrestle, and I am the same on Instagram. I have t-shirts and signed 8x10s available on my big cartel and both links are on my Twitter and my Instagram. So there we go. All the links are there. We're also going to be putting them in the description here in case you weren't able to get a piece of paper or just didn't understand you could back up a YouTube video. The links are in the description right here. Jetta, I can't thank you enough for joining me today. It was an, an esteemed pleasure. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for having me. And thank you everyone for Tuning in today to uh, to our interview, uh, you know the drill, like, subscribe, all that stuff. I'm Mr. Warren Hayes, I'll see you next time. <laughs>